I'm a puppeteer. Every day I have to admit it to myself. I am a puppeteer. I will be a puppeteer to the rest of my life. I have to live with it. I'm a functioning puppeteer now. Any puppeteers out there? Any people who have to live with that in their families that your dear one is a puppeteer? I can't hear it. Yes. So up the creek without a puppet. And we're not going to do any of that. You know, we have a, we have a rule in our family, no puppetry at the table, no animation of food, no, you know, daddy puppet and mommy puppet and uh, baby puppet. I'm a beautiful baby. We're not going to do that. Uh, we're not going to do toilet paper core puppets. Why not? I'm a beautiful puppet. Yes, you are beautiful. I absolutely agree you're beautiful. You fat, get out of here. Excuse me? Uh, you know what very popular are those giant puppets like the bread and puppet in Vermont. So we could have mommy puppet or daddy puppet. No, we're not going to have that. Uh, we could have that, we could have this, ah. and we could have, oh, last, the first time around, we had this forest dwarf. There are these monsters in the woods here and beautiful animals and turtles and all kinds of things, and there are dwarfs. And we had a dwarf. Is the dwarf here? Is he going to help us again? Is he going to introduce it? I'm not going to do it because I am not doing any Zoom anymore. It's awful, there are glitches all the time, and uh, I just don't want to do that. Well, excuse me, no, 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 I'm not doing it. <sighs> if only Kashparik was here. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Oh, wow, how did you make it here? Well, I walked all the way from the city. Uh, uh, it was a long walk because uh, I walked through uh, these weird towns like uh, Poughkeepsie and, and Albany. Uh, maybe I took a little detour. Do you have a place to sit? I think we have a place to sit. Uh, excuse me, uh, this is a nap time story or a bedtime story, but uh, you have to listen at least for a little while. Okay, 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 I listen. Uh, it just better not be boring like usual. Okay, so just hold on to uh, that. This is my mom's toy puppet. She played with it in 1920s. And I played it with, with this Kashparik, this gesture that already fell asleep um, in 1950s. Just Kashparik, gesture like this, is in every Czech puppet place. So it's very important that he made it here. And he even brought his little stage, which is my mom's stage with his face on it from the 1920s. Isn't that beautiful? And we're going to have a story. This is kind of time traveling. I used to do folk tales, fairy tales, that is, for adults, young adults, mostly in jazz clubs, even rock clubs. I would pull out a fairy tale on these young adults in the middle of a rock concert with a rock musician jamming with me, and they would be totally surprised and trapped, but they would love it. So when I came to New York, I started doing it again. I found wonderful jazz musicians who did it with me in galleries and cafes and places like that. So I am doing a time traveling back to that and Zoom traveling to do that. And we're going to have our second story of our series. We had magic pot. Yeah, is there, is there any pot? Uh, I would like to hear that story again. It's magic pot, it's about cooking porridge. It's nothing about controlled substances. All right. Okay. Today's story. 
is called King Polecat. Now, nobody really knows who, what a polecat is. It's a European animal and it stinks. And you must know, most of us, the expression it, he, she stinks like a polecat. But most of the people don't know what that expression, why that expression. It's because polecats are kind of European skunks uh, that stink a lot and like to steal poultry. So our story is King Polecat. Take it away, Lisa. <laughs> There was a time, but it was long gone, when chickens led carefree lives in the comfort of their own manure heaps. They dug for maggots in freedom. The hens could eat any worm they found. And the rooster would share the best morsels with his favorite hen, one that he particularly fancied. If a hen wasn't happy, he'd comb her with his beak, and that was that. When the oldest rooster crowed in the morning, all the other roosters in the village would join in, and the day could begin. The first changes to the old ways came when the frogs, who weren't happy with their way of life, called a frog congress. They croaked and croaked for nights and days until they croaked up the stork, stork as their king. The chickens envied them such a majestic ruler. They talked at length about the respect he held among the frogs and how he managed to restrain their croaking to only night time. chickens called their own congress where they all agreed to have a king who they celebrated their unity for a week before they proceeded with the selection but ouch choosing a king was a different matter no rooster wanted to be ruled by another one. Each wanted to lord it over all the others. Soon, the roosters were vigorously pecking each other. each other in the spirit of frank competition. And when the hens brought up the idea that one of them should be a sovereign queen, a once for all erupted. Replace arguments, 
blood poured from the rooster's combs, and feathers flew like snowflake in a blizzard. Chicken kind would have perished altogether if it weren't for a wise old rooster who came up with a magnificent idea. We need a king everyone would fear, he said. <laughs> There is no better candidate than a p p p p pole cat. There was a six minute sustained flapping of short wings as all the chickens cheered the idea. They sent a messenger to the polecat offering him the chicken crown. with the offering. He made a long speech about the long-standing friendly relations between his kin and chickens. He promised to keep all the chicken laws unchanged and to protect his subjects from their arch enemies, the marten, his cousin weasel, and the fox. Moreover, he said, I will choose counselors from among prominent roosters, and I will heed their advice like my own. was a magnificent coronation ceremony as the polecat sat down on the luminous white throne as the first chicken king. <laughs> became thirsty. He called a splendid fat rooster to his audience room and asked him, Dear rooster, do you smell anything? The rooster was a truth-loving bird, and he said, With all respect to your majesty, there is a horrible stench in here. He was right. For any polecat stinks something awful. But the king cried out, Ha! Traitor! You have committed the most repellent crime by offending our royal person. You deserve to die. He jumped down from the throne, bit off the rooster's head, and lapped his blood. But as soon as he returned to his throne, he craved chicken blood again. 
for the tasty drink only increased his thirst. It wasn't long before he called another rooster to the audience room and gave him the same question. The rooster noticed the blood stains on the royal whiskers. His eyes dashed around the royal chamber in panic until they fell on the headless body of his predecessor tossed carelessly aside. He started shivering. Goosebumps sprung all over his body and his feathers rose in horror. <laughs> Majesty, he finally squeezed out of his bill. I smell the most delicious perfume. You are a liar and a traitor, cried King Polkia. You are trying to gain our trust by toadying and flattery. You deserve that for such a horrible, heinous crime. disposed of him in the same manner as that of his unfortunate predecessor. As soon as he had sucked out all of his blood, he called in another of his counselors, for his thirst only increased. Dear and noble rooster, he said, wiping fresh blood from of his lips. Do you smell anything in this room? A glance at his muzzle and at the two headless bodies lying along the wall told the rooster what was going on. He guessed the danger of either telling the truth or telling a lie. He was already parting with his life when he fell upon a desperate idea. Your most illustrious majesty, please have the leniency of excusing me but I don't smell a thing. The summer's been unusually wet and I have been suffering from a horrible, weird infection. Ooh, 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 ooh. His stinking royal majesty saw his victim slipping through the no news. But... Since he couldn't find anything else to accuse him of, he had to let him go. In peace.
<laughs> when are you going to start the story? Excuse me, I just finished the story. Oh, yes, and we should thank the audience for coming. Oh, thank you for coming, and I hope you will come again, and I hope there will be another story, and I hope I will hear it. Thank you. Bye. Yep.